Hello, Dr. Anthony Pasek here with the Wellness Connection. Today, we're going to talk about autoimmunity and early detection, maybe even prevention. There's an old phrase, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? If you can find a problem early on, maybe we can avoid it altogether or certainly have a better outcome the sooner we know about, uh, about certain problems. And that's certainly true with autoimmunity. So imagine this is a, a patient, you know, I won't be too specific here, but imagine if you were a patient and you found out that you had antibodies, you know, to a certain tissue, you know, antibodies to your, your thyroid or antibodies to your joints. If those showed up on a lab test and you were sent to see a specialist like a rheumatologist or somebody, if you went there and they told you, well, there's not really anything we can do for you right now, come back when you know, essentially you can't function when you have such debilitating pain that you, you know, you can't move about your day-to-day -day life, then come back and see me and we'll add a medication, you know, maybe some type of biologic medication, some kind of immune suppressant or something like that. That's a pretty common story. We hear that, we hear that fairly frequently here. So that, that has to be frustrating, right? The, the problem is that's not the only approach that there is, that's hopeful, right? There is, there is really interesting information out there that says you might have antibodies, that's a blood test that you can use to measure your immune system's attack or potential to attack certain tissues. You might have antibodies on testing that shows up for a long time before you actually have a particular autoimmune disease. So what does that look like? Let's say you had a triggering event or a combination of triggering events in your life. So you might have a genetic susceptibility to an autoimmune disease. You might have an imbalance in the microbes in your gut. You might have food sensitivities. You might end up with some type of uh, in infection, a combination of several things that then turns on this autoimmune expression where your immune system starts to make antibodies that are targeting a certain tissue. So let's just say the joints, right? Your joints in your, in your hands, for instance. So you may start that process today but you may not actually have that disease, like in the fingers, you might not actually have joint destruction that shows up on an x-ray or an MRI or an ultrasound or something like that for years and years and years, right? So there's this window, it's sometimes called a latent period between where you have that immune system making antibodies, your immune system making antibodies against your own body parts, and then a period of, in some cases, years before you actually are expressing that disease. So it's kind of a, I think, kind of a bad idea, <laughs> kind of a silly idea to just wait around and say, well, let's just, let's just wait until those tissues are being attacked and destroyed. And then in the Western medical world, well, we'll give you a medication, a pharmaceutical, which is essentially the main tool that they have to offer for this, right? I think it would be very worthwhile to, to know about those antibodies if they were present, if we were gonna predict a disease years before it would happen, right? It would be great to prevent that problem altogether from occurring and maybe even get your body to stop making those antibodies and then you never end up with that disease. That's certainly a possibility. So there are very different time frames for this latent period based on what disease we're talking about. So there's research from a few years ago that I have seen in the past. It was recently at a seminar I went to, uh, brought to light again. So I'd like to share that information with you. This is on a chart here. <clears throat> so on the left, we see each disease. I'll kind of read along the key points here. There's some really detailed information in the middle that's not really that relevant. But in the left column, we have the named disease. And then in the right column, we have the years preceding clinical disease. 
So how long until you actually have that disease and really destruction of that particular tissue or that particular body part happening? So with rheumatoid arthritis, you may have these antibodies in blood that can be detected if you, if you test for them. That's key. If you don't test for them, you won't know that they're there. You might have antibodies that predict rheumatoid arthritis for on average 13.8 uh, years, almost 14 years before you actually have this. To put it a different way, if you develop rheumatoid arthritis when you're 30, you may have had antibodies that were detectable. Oh boy, I'm gonna have to do that math. <laughs> that were detectable all the way back to you know uh, age 18 or so, right? Or even you know throughout your whole 20s. So that's a long period of time where you may have been able to detect these antibodies and potentially do something about it before you actually developed this condition. Now, I want to be clear on this. It doesn't mean that if you have this disease, it's too late to do anything. But again, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, right? So as much as early as we can find these things, that would be great. Lupus is another one, eight years for lupus. Multiple sclerosis, MS, a little bit shorter, that's three years. Type one diabetes, 10 years. 10 years for type one diabetes. Autoimmune thyroiditis, so this is things like Hashimoto's, but also Graves' disease. Hashimoto's is the most common autoimmune disease and seven years, seven years. We see this in practice pretty consistently. We'll do labs on somebody and they have thyroid antibodies positive, and then they may not have low thyroid hormone levels. Their TSH, which is kind of a, a measure of the brain's detection of thyroid hormone levels, their TSH might be totally normal. That's the screening test that your doctor would use. Your thyroid hormone levels might be totally normal, but you still have antibodies present. There could be a period of years where you have antibodies present, and then even if you did a biopsy, of the thyroid or did an ultrasound of the thyroid, it would look like totally normal tissue. But that's a really key window. If we find these antibodies before there's any tissue destruction and we address those triggers, maybe there's a food component, a food, uh, an inflammatory food or a food that you have a sensitivity to that you're eating that's causing your immune system to, to promote uh, making antibodies to your thyroid. Maybe there's an imbalance in the, in the microbes in your gut, uh, or you have a leaky gut, significant inflammation in your gut. Maybe there's a, a, a chemical toxin burden. You know, maybe there's a, a, a really big disruption in your, in your sleep-wake cycle, or you're under significant amounts of stress. There are several things that can be done to help to slow this down and maybe even make those antibodies go away and you stop producing them before you ever even get the disease. A few other ones that we'll look at, adrenal gland autoimmunity, 10 years. Primary biliary cirrhosis. This is a type of liver disease that is autoimmune. Look at that, that's almost 20 years, 20 years. Systemic sclerosis, and our, I think that means not reported. Sjogren's syndrome, seven years, celiac disease, not reported, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, two inflammatory bowel diseases, about the same, four and a half years. So this is an interesting set of information, I think. There's another important point. The last video that I did last week talked about COVID, the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, as a potential trigger for some of these conditions. And there are certain antibodies like this antimicrobial antibody for primary biliary sclerosis, cirrhosis rather, uh, ANA, anti-nuclear antibody for lupus, and a few others on here, thyroid antibodies as well, that can be commonly triggered from the COVID virus. Uh, commonly, we've got a pretty, pretty short set of data here since COVID is so new, but the trends are, are pointing towards some of these being being things that we might see on the rise. And it could be years and years and years later, we might see, unfortunately, you know, a rise in some of these things, maybe, you know, decade or, or two down the line, 
after this wave of, of COVID. There's, of course, other factors here, but the idea is early detection, right? So it would be great if we could just kind of test for everything on everybody, right? But that's not really practically possible. So, you know, we do some screening, we can get an idea through some of our non specific markers, we can get an indication uh, from your white blood cell count, for instance, and some other markers, hey, are we suspecting that there might be autoimmune going on here? And also how somebody's responding to a care plan. So if any of this uh, has, has piqued your interest, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to discuss this uh, at an appointment. If you have any questions about this, please leave comments below. If you would like uh, a subject to be discussed, please also feel free to comment on that. I look forward to talking to you next time.